Krishna 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 hey Krishna 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 hey Krishna 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 Rock Shaman Krishna 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 Pahimam Rama Raghava Rama Raghava Rama Raghava Rakshamam Krishna Keshava Krishna Keshava Krishna Keshava Pahimam Rama Raghava Rama Raghava Rama Raghava Rakshama Krishna Keshava Krishna Keshava Krishna Keshava Pahimam The following is a summary of the pastime of Rukmini being married to Krishna as is given to us in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya When Sri Krishna returned to Mathura, which was still under siege by the barbarian army of Kaliyavana, Krishna destroyed this army, collected all the valuables the soldiers had been carrying, and then set off for Dwaraka. But just then, Jarasandha arrived on the scene with a force of 23 Akshalhinis. Lord Balaram and Lord Krishna, acting as if fearful, left their riches aside and ran far away. Because Jarasandha could not appreciate their true power, Jarasandha ran after Krishna and Balaram. After running a long distance, Ram and Krishna came to a mountain named Pravarshana and proceeded to climb it. Jarasandha thought that Krishna and Balaram were hiding inside a cave and so he looked all over for them. Unable to find Krishna and Balaram, Jarasandha built fires on all sides of the mountain. As the vegetation on the mountain slopes burst into flame, Krishna and Balaram jumped off the mountain peak. After reaching the ground unseen by Jarasandha and his followers, Krishna and Balaram returned to Dwaraka Fort, which floated within the sea. Mistakenly, Jarasandha thought that Ram and Krishna must have burned to death in the fire. And so, Jarasandha took his army back to his kingdom. At this point, Maharaj Parikshit asked a question and Shukadeva Goswami responded by beginning to narrate the history of the marriage of Lord Sri Krishna and Rukmini. Rukmini, the young daughter of Bhishmaka, who was the king of Vidarbha, 
had heard of Sri Krishna's beauty, strength, and other fine qualities. And so Rukmini therefore made up her mind that only Krishna would be the perfect husband for her. Lord Krishna also wanted to marry Rukmini. But although Rukmini's other relatives approved of her marriage to Krishna, Rukmini's brother Rukmi was envious of Krishna and thus forbade her, his sister to marry him. Rukmi wanted Rukmini to marry his friend Shishupal instead. Rukmini unhappily took up her duties in preparation for the marriage. But she did send a trustworthy Brahmana to Krishna with a letter. When the Brahmana arrived in Dwaraka, Sri Krishna properly honored the Brahmana with ritual worship and other tokens of reverence. Krishna then asked the Brahman why he had come. The Brahmana opened Rukmini's letter and showed it to Lord Krishna, but he had the messenger read it to him. Rukmini Devi wrote, Ever since I have heard about you, my Lord, I have become completely attracted to you. So without fail, please come before my marriage to Shishupal and take me away. In accordance with family custom, on the day before my marriage, I will visit the temple of Goddess Ambika. And that would be the best opportunity for you to appear and easily kidnap me. But if you do not show me this favor, I will give up my life by fasting and observing severe vows. So perhaps in my next life, I will be able to attain you. After Lord Krishna heard the Brahmin messenger, recite Rukmini's letter, Krishna said, I am indeed attracted to Rukmini, and I also know of her brother's Rukmi opposition to my marrying her. Therefore, I must kidnap Rukmini after crushing all the low-class kings, just as one might generate fire from wood by friction. Since the solemnizing of vows between Rukmini and Shishupal was scheduled to occur in only three days, Lord Krishna had Daruka ready his chariot at once. Then Krishna immediately set out for the kingdom of Vidarbha, which he reached after one night's travel. King Bhishmaka trapped by affection for his son Rukmi, was prepared to give his daughter Rukmini to Shishupal. Bhishmaka saw to all the necessary preparations. He had the city decorated in various ways and had its main roads and intersections thoroughly cleansed. Dhamagosh, the king of Chedi, also having done everything necessary to prepare for his son Shishupal's marriage, arrived in Vidarbha. King Bhishmaka greeted Dhamagosh properly and gave him a place to stay. Many other kings, such as Jarasandha, Shalva, and Dantavakra, also came to witness the occasion. These enemies of Krishna had conspired to kidnap the bride if Krishna were to come. They planned to fight Krishna together and thus guarantee Shishupal his bride. Hearing of these plans, Lord Baladev gathered his entire army and quickly went to Kundinapur. On the night before the wedding, Rukmini 
about to retire for the night, had still not seen either the Brahmana or Krishna arrive. In anxiety, Rukmani cursed her bad fortune. But just then, Rukmini felt the left side of her body twitching, and that was certainly a good omen. Indeed, the Brahmana shortly appeared and related to Rukmini what Krishna had told him, including Krishna's firm promise to kidnap Rukmini. When King Bhishmaka heard that Krishna and Balaram had arrived, he went out to greet them to the accompaniment of triumphant music. King Bhishmaka worshipped Krishna and Balaram with various gifts and then designated residences for them. Thus King Bhishmaka showed due respect to Krishna and Balaram as he had done to each of his numerous royal guests. The people of Vidarbha, seeing Lord Krishna, remarked to one another that Krishna alone would be a suitable husband for Rukmini. They prayed that on the strength of whatever pious credit they had, Krishna might win Rukmini's hand. When the time came for Srimati Rukmini Devi to visit the temple of Sri Ambika, Rukmini proceeded there surrounded by many guards. After bowing down to the deity, Rukmini prayed to be allowed to have Sri Krishna as her husband. Rukmini then took the hand of her girlfriend and left the Ambika temple. However, seeing Rukmini's indescribable beauty, the great heroes present dropped their weapons and fell from their horses to the ground unconscious. Rukmini then walked with deliberate steps until she noticed Krishna. And then, as everyone looked on, Sri Krishna took Rukmini onto his chariot. Like a lion claiming its rightful share from a band of jackals, Krishna drove back all the opposing kings, slowly making his exit and followed by all of his associates. Jarasandha and the other kings unable to bear their defeat and dishonor, loudly condemned themselves, declaring that this defamation was like a petty animal stealing away what rightfully belongs to the lion. As Sri Krishna was taking Princess Rukmini away, the inimical kings gathered their armies and pursued Krishna. But Lord Baladeva and the generals of the Yadava army turned to face these opponents, blocking their advance. The enemy armies then began pouring incessant showers of arrows upon Lord Krishna's army. Seeing her husband-to-be's forces under such violent attack, Rukmini looked at Krishna fearfully but Krishna simply smiled and told Rukmini there was nothing to fear because his army would surely destroy the enemy in short order. Lord Balaram and the other heroes then began to annihilate the opposing army with special arrows. The enemy kings, headed by Jarasandha, retreated after suffering the destruction of their armies at the hands of the Yadavas. Jarasandha then consoled Shishupal. Oh, my, oh, my dear, dear friend, friend. Happiness, happiness and distress, and distress are, are never, never permanent, permanent, 
and are under the control of the Supreme Lord. Why indeed? Seventeen times Krishna defeated me, but in the end I was victorious over Krishna. Thus seeing that victory and defeat are under the control of destiny, I have learned not to succumb to either lamentation or joy. Time now favors the Yadavas, so they have defeated you with only a small army. But in the future, time will favor you, Shishupal, and you will surely conquer them. Consoled in this way, Shishupal took his followers and returned to his kingdom. Rukmini's brother Rukmi, who hated Krishna, however, was infuriated by Krishna's kidnapping his sister Rukmini. So after vowing before all the kings present that he would not return to Kundina until Krishna had been destroyed, and Rukmini rescued, Rukmi set out with his army to attack Krishna. Being ignorant of Lord Krishna's glories, Rukmi boldly went out to attack Krishna in a lone chariot. Rukmi approached Krishna, striking him with arrows, and demanded that Krishna release Rukmini. Sri Krishna fended off Rukmi's weapons, breaking them all to pieces. Then Krishna raised his sword high and was about to kill Rukmi when Rukmini interceded and fervently pleaded that her brother's life be spared. And so Lord Krishna did not kill Rukmi, but with his sword, Krishna shaved off bits of Rukmi's hair here and there, leaving him disfigured and odd-looking. Just then, Lord Baladeva appeared on the scene along with the Yadava army. Seeing Rukmi disfigured, Baladeva gently reproached Krishna. Oh, my brother! To disfigure such a close family member is as good as killing him. Therefore, Rukmi should not be killed, but instead he should be set free. Lord Baladev then told Rukmini that the sorry condition of her brother was only the fruit of Rukmi's own past work, since everyone is responsible for his or her own happiness and suffering. Baladev further instructed Rukmini about the transcendental position of the jiva soul and how both illusion of happiness and distress is simply a result of ignorance. Accepting Lord Balaram's instructions, Rukmini thus gave up her sorrow. Meanwhile, Rukmi, feeling totally frustrated, deprived as he was of all strength and even the will to fight, Rukmi vowed not to return home without conquering Krishna. And so, Rukmi constructed a city on that very spot and took up residence there in a mood of undiminished anger. Lord Krishna then took Rukmini to his capital, Dwaraka, and married her. All the citizens celebrated in lavish style, broadcasting throughout the city accounts of how Krishna had kidnapped Rukmini. Everyone in Dwaraka was delighted to see Lord Krishna united with Rukmini. Mm -hmm. 
Krishna, 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 hey. Krishna, 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 hey. Krishna, 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 Rakshama. Krishna, 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 Pahima. Rama, Raghava, Rama, Raghava, Rama, Raghava, Rakshama. Krishna Keshava, Krishna Keshava, Krishna Keshava, Pahima. Rama Raghava, Rama Raghava, Rama Raghava, Rakshama. Krishna Keshava, Krishna Keshava, Krishna Keshava, Pahima. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Ram, Rama Rama. Hare Hare. All glories to Krishna's pastimes. All glories to His divine grace. A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada.